Gigi, I'm just going to speak anecdotally here. I know a lot of people fully vaccinated who currently have COVID-19 at the moment. It seems like it's a situation that is rapidly escalating. Are we just going to see this rip through the population in a matter of weeks? And then where does that leave us on the other side? Yeah, so for people who are vaccinated, for people who are boosted, it looks, um, we, we are hopeful that this is going to be a pretty mild thing, but um, we can't say that for everyone, and we can't say that for sure for the unvaccinated. So I think, you know, the transmission is really high, but we are risking our healthcare system being overwhelmed even more than that it already is, and that's the biggest concern right now. Well, when we speak about what the lethality is like for unvaccinated individuals, obviously there could be a greater threat to them there, but will that also leave people who are immunized via vaccines and then maybe naturally immunized because they've been exposed to the variant at such a high level that we actually reach some kind of herd immunity? I hope so, but I think it, it might be a little bit too much to ask. Um, herd immunity was always kind of an elusive um, goal that was going to leave a lot of people um, very, very sick or worse. Um, so I think, you know, I, all pandemics end at some point. This one will too, but, um, but I think we have many more months to go with this and potentially new variants down the way. I, I, we need to um, do what we can to shore up our healthcare system to deal with these surges. Where, Gigi, are the healthcare system uh, weaknesses most profound? Where are you seeing rates escalate and hospitalizations escalate fastest? Where are we seeing the greatest crunch, if you will, with respect to this particular virus strain? Well, geographically, right now, it's in the big cities, but that will uh, that will change soon. And I've I've been seeing reports that um, that sub suburban hospitals outside of Houston are also seeing um, big surges. But and the larger scale, we are seeing a, a critical shortage of nursing care, and um, and that is going to continue. You know, we can only we've been in this for many months now, and uh, short term surges are very possible for lots of people. But we are really into to a long-term situation where we need to think more long-term about what we want out of our healthcare system. And then in terms of preventative measures, we're certainly in New York talking a lot about sort of the lack of at-home testing kits and the lines to get boosters, uh, the, the appointment sort of construct becoming more and more difficult. The strains are becoming more evident. Are you seeing something similar in the rest of the United States as well? Where are we getting the greatest strain for our preventative measures from a preventative perspective? Right. The the crunch on testing is really um, is really unfortunate, um, and we because a lot of the stops were opened up so that we could have more tests available, but the demand is exceeding that, and so we we do need more testing. And I think we need to make sure that we have that available for you know for the long term for the long term future. Um, another thing that we are hoping for is a is the Pfizer drug that will be hopefully more available in the coming months um, that reduces your risk of hospitalization with COVID. So that could really do such a great job of, you know, of restoring um, people's ability to go to the emergency room for other things besides COVID and um, being able to, to have a healthcare system there for mm -hmm. you. Uh, Gigi, yeah, on that subject, good morning. On that subject of that Pfizer drug, some people in the uh, pharma industry have been uh, perhaps a little disappointed at the amount of, of the drug that's going to be produced and therefore the, the ability it will have to, to really make a sizable difference to the Omicron wave. Is this something for Omicron or is this something for a, uh, I really don't want to say it, but for a wave that lies ahead? Right. Um, I, I think, well, we don't know how long Omicron is going to be with us. It's transmitting very fast. Um, in South Africa, it's already, um, we're seeing that the peak is over. And so it could be that um, that this drug may be more uh, relevant for Sigma or Tau or some other letters that are in the future. <laughs> but um, the fact that we can talk about this, that we're already on Omicron, is an indicator that, you know, this is something that's going to be with us. We need to start incorporating some of these things into our daily lives. Make sure that you have uh, well-ventilated spaces in your homes. There are things you could do to improve uh, your circulation so that you know, even if somebody uh, does become ill, that you're not necessarily infecting the whole household, and particularly the most vulnerable mm. member. 
uh, Gigi, you're really testing my knowledge of the Greek alphabet. I really don't want to be tested <laughs> any further. Uh, if we could just leave it at Omicron, you know, I, sure, I speak for, you know, the planet, that, that would be a good thing. Um, the Moderna booster increases antibodies 37-fold. We learned that this morning. Uh, that might not have been a surprise to, to people following this very closely, but it seems like good news. But, but the key question, I suppose, then, and, and our colleague Sam Fazelli was asking this earlier, you know, how long does the, if you've been boosted then, how long does that protection last for? And I suppose that is a big unknown right now. It's an unknown. I think um, we are more hopeful that uh, this booster will help because it's not only um, increasing the amount of antibodies that you can produce, the amount of neutralizing antibodies, but the quality of them. And so it's hoped that this will last longer. But Moderna is also working on an Omicron-specific booster, and so is Pfizer. Um, but of course, I mean, this is uh, something that is available to us here in the United States and other wealthy countries. But uh, it's a global population that's at risk with COVID. And so being able to boost that supply is something that, you know, we're, we have not done a great job for.